Tan Cho Chuan, President of NUS, uh, Professor Jaya Kumar, former Chief Justice Chan Chek Kyung, other justices, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. My earliest memory of Mr. Lee Kuan Yew dates back to the early 1950s when I was a student at the Bukit Timah campus. He was sitting in the audience of then a public debate in Singapore organized by the University of Malaya. This was the frequent occurrence then. He had recently returned from his studies in London. His charisma was evident even at that early age. He struck me then as being extraordinarily alert and a force to be reckoned with. Since my NTUC days in the 1960s, I worked for him and with him. He gave me, a very junior civil servant, many assignments beyond my status. For some reason, he thought I could get the things done that he wanted done. What I have to say today is are reflections of the man, what and how he did what he wanted, and what impressions remain etched in my mind. It is against the backdrop of this relationship that I ask you to view what I have to say today. These reflections and impressions I formed of him are from that experience. He came to our scene in Singapore with the reputation he had made in the Milan Forum in London. Later, while handling the postal workers' strike in Singapore, he came to prominence locally. In the 50 years I've worked with him, what do I make of the man? Overall, his obsessions was always with Singapore and his deep anxiety about our future. But there was always his confidence that if we worked together, we would overcome whatever dangers threatened us. Perhaps this explained why he was always fearless in advocating our cause and fighting against the odds that like threats of communist intimidation and chauvinistic threats. He gave us the courage as a people to stand up and have the strength to fight those threats and intimidations. This was at a time when most of us were cowed by such intimidation. We then faced a very bleak future. When independence came, we were in a region where nationalistic neighbors were determined to cut Singapore off from the middleman role that we had traditionally performed. To survive, he exhorted us to create a Singapore different from our neighborhood. This we did. Singapore is now a brand name. We have sought after, we are very much sought after by others. We are viewed as a capable people, honest in our dealings and hardworking. That was not the case when self-government came to us in 1959 and then independence in 1965. 